Okay, up next we're going to make a fanny pack. You'll need, you know, your standard sewing tools, scissors, pins, thread to match whatever you're working on, uh, and a ruler. Okay, and then you'll need your fabric. This is the outside. This will be the outside. And then because this is light and I want to give it a little weight, I'm going to use a denim as the lining. And then you'll need something for the waist part, the belt. Oh, and I'll also be using some interfacing. So the one I have here is a medium weight iron-on interfacing. You could use a sew-on inter interface and it's completely up to you. I just like to take the lazy route and iron it on as opposed to sew it on. And so of the interfacing, if you buy one fourth of a yard of interfacing, that's plenty for this project. Okay, and for this, you need one fourth of a yard of fabric for the one we're doing. I'm gonna cut it out eight inches long. So if you buy a fourth of a yard of fabric, that gives you nine inches. So I have a fourth of a yard of my outside and a fourth of a yard of the lining. This is about an inch and a half wide. If you buy, say, a yard and one eighth, that will give you 40 inches, which is plenty enough to do the waistband part of it. Okay, and to cut it out, what I'm doing, I want to use this cool sunflower print for the outside. So I'm going to cut, and basically you're going to cut the same thing of the fabric. You cut the fabric out the exact same way you cut the lining, so you will have identical pieces. Okay, to get started, I'm going to cut out my first piece which is the um, outside of my fanny pack. And I want it to be eight inches wide. We'll cut this eight inches wide and six inches in height. So if I put myself a little mark here, I'm actually going to come over to my cutting mat. If you have a cutting mat, it's perfect because it already has the measurements on here for you. So I'll just find my eight inches. That's my eight inches here. Then I'm going to go up to six. And I have a ruler, so my six inches is this line. So that's my snip, and then eight is here. Okay, so this will be the outside of my fanny pack, and then I want a flap that's going to come over to close it. So I'll cut the flap out a little bit more narrow than the um, bag itself and a little shorter so if this is we cut this eight by six i'll just go down an inch i'll cut the flap seven by five and you only need one of the outside of the flap the inner inside of it will be the um, lining fabric okay let's see i want to find a piece that has the sunflower centered so that I can use that as my flap. I like the sunflower. You'll see this, the front of the fanny pack. So we're gonna cut this seven by five. I have my five inches marked here and then just to go seven inches across mark my seven inches here so that I know I have seven inch width and let me find seven here I'm just going to kind of center my ruler in the center of the flower and then make my seven inches from there that's about centered okay so I'll mark my seven inch here because I'm trying to get the most of the flower. If you don't have a print that you're concerned about, you just cut out your piece that's um, seven inches by five. I'll cut this out and then we go cut the line and fabric the same way. So we have the bottom part of it done, and then this will be our flap for it. So then you take your lining and cut out the same thing. You need two pieces of the um, bottom part of it, and I'll use this as my guide. Okay. 
two pieces of the outside, two pieces of the lining. And then you just need one piece for your flap. Again, to give it a little bit more shape, I'm going to interface all of our pieces the two pieces of our bag here, and then the uh, flat piece, I'll interface it. So what I have is a fusible interfacing here. And fusible just means it's iron on, remember. So I'll just cut myself two pieces so that I can adhere it to both pieces of my bag. And if you don't have interfacing, don't worry about it. I'm just doing it just as a matter of preference. It'll give it a little bit more weight and help it to maintain its shape better. And then I will go press this interfacing to the wrong side of my denim piece here. Okay, I have the two pieces of my fanny pack. I have the wrong side of my fabric matched up with the wrong side of my interfacing. Remember the bumpy part of the interfacing here is where the glue is. So I'll match up the wrong side of the interfacing with the wrong side of my fabric. And normally I'd probably use some type of little pressing cloth or something, but because I have so few pieces in there little, I won't worry about that. Just make sure your iron, the uh, steam is turned off and just go over it lightly. This extra that's here, we'll just come back and trim it later, so don't worry about it. Because I didn't make sure I cut precisely, so I'll just trim it. So you want to in, uh, interface all three pieces, the two pieces of your bag and the flap as well. Okay, to get started, what we can do is go ahead and pin all of our pieces together. Okay, for your strap, cut yourself two pieces that are 20 inches long. For my two pieces that are 20 inches long and that's plenty long enough for um, what we're doing and once you've made one for your kid or yourself whoever you're making it for you can kind of get the adjustments right and determine if you need less ribbon or if you need more ribbon so 20 inches for each piece is a good average and so then what you want to do is come down you're going to sew it to one piece of your outside and i'll come down about say an inch and i'll know that's why i want it to start So if you come down an inch, that gives you enough room up here for um, your stitching line, gives you enough for the seam allowance. And you just want to take, like if I look at this, I can see there's a right side and a wrong side. So I wanna make sure I'm laying the right side of my strap out with the right side of my fabric. And then I'll pin that into place. And then go over here. I came down about an inch, right side of the strap with the right side of the fabric. Strap, belt, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and then I'm just going to stitch here, and then I'll come stitch on this side. Okay, so just stitch the sides of this, the strap, onto your fabric. Okay, and do your other side. stitch this piece to the other side of your bag okay and now you're going to sew your two outside bag pieces together so this strap that we just did i'm going to kind of fold it up so that i make sure it is out of my way so i'll fold it and i'll put a safety pin in it to kind of help keep it out of my way and then as i'm sewing i'll feel for it as well to make sure it's out of the way So I have my safety pin here to keep that out of my way. 
and then I just want to pin it and I'm going to sew along the sides, the three sides here along the bottom and back up the top the same way we did it. Okay, that would be the outside. This is my lining pieces, the two pieces of denim. You sew it the exact same way, right sides together. Okay, and then your flap, you sew it the same way. I actually have my interface in here on the denim piece, no big deal. Okay, match up the right side of my lining with the right side of my actual fabric. And then you're stitching the same way on all three pieces. We're gonna come here on the flap, stitch down the side, across the bottom, and up this other side. You leave this top part open, so you're stitching on three sides. Same thing with the lining. You, if you call this piece your top, stitch along the side, the bottom, and up the other way. And just be aware, if you have something that has a design on it, a one-way design, make sure you're laying it out correctly so that you are leaving the top part of it open and you're not, you know, accidentally sewing it with your design going upside down. Okay, and just fill in to make sure your strap's out of the way. we say the standard seam allowance is actually five eighths of an inch especially if you're going by a pattern but because this is a pattern that I created I'm just using my presser foot as a guideline so my seam allowance will end up being roughly about a quarter to half of an inch here but it's up to you if you have a wider seam allowance your bag is just smaller that's all Just make sure you find yourself a guideline so that you have a straight stitch that you're doing. And so by putting my presser foot along the edge of my fabric here, that um, gives me a straight stitch. Okay, that's our flat piece. There's the lining. Get all of our pieces turned. This is my lining. I'm just going to cut this corner here on the diagonal. Cut the triangle off and that'll help it to lay flatter. Okay, this is the bag. Same thing. I'm just going to cut across that triangle and I'll probably trim some of this interfacing here. And this would be your flap closure and you can trim it a little bit if you need to so that you have more of a narrow seam go ahead and turn your flap to the right side I'm going to take my pointer here to get my corner out just be careful you don't poke a hole in it Okay, and I'll probably go back, I'm gonna go back to the ironing board and press this so that everything's nice and flat. So because this is the wrong side, let me show you. Take this off for a second. I'll probably end up putting it back, take the pin off. So if the back is gonna go on your body like this, it lays against your body. So this would be my front, because this is the front of the strap that we're using and this is the back side so if you lay it out this way you can see this is my front so i want to sew my flap to the back so i'll turn it over this is the back of my bag this is the back of my strap and i'm going to take my flap and just sew it across the front here you could go to the machine and just do a stitch across here just a long basting stitch to keep it closed for you um, but I'm going to skip that step. 
So I'm gonna take my bag and open it up and just center my flap on the bag and sew it that way. That looks about centered. So I have about a half an inch on this side and about a half an inch space on that side. And then what I'll do is sew the flap onto the bag this way. Just from here to here is what I'm gonna sew. Okay, then what you'll do is just open your bag up and sew the flap to the top edge of it here. And then just be aware what I'm doing is sewing a little closer to the edge so that when I come back and sew my line into the bag, I'm gonna sew more on this side so that I don't see the stitch in that I put here. So for the flap, try to sew close to the edge so that when you come to the lining, you can sew more here and you don't see this stitch here. Okay, and just open it and make sure I'm not actually sewing the bag closed. So, so far, this is what you have. The bag is pretty much done. We've sewn the flap to it, and you have your straps here. And then what I'm going to do is go put a buttonhole here so that this will close with a button. But there are so many different options. You could do a button, you could do Velcro, you could do a snap, you could do nothing if you wanted to and just leave it like this. Um, but for this one, I think I'll put a buttonhole here so that a button gets sewn onto the underside of it. Okay, so for my machine, I have a Brother Project Runway. So for whatever machine you have, get your buttonhole attachment. And this one, it has a place where I can slide the button in here so that it makes the buttonhole to the exact size of my button. So it's closed this way. I'm gonna open it up push this to open it up so that I can put my button in here. I'm gonna just hold it in place for me a little bit. Same, but it'll vary. So the way you sew on buttonholes will vary slightly depending on your machine. So just check your manual for your attachment. Okay, I'm gonna remove this presser foot and attach my buttonhole foot. This is the front. There's an A. And so I know that's the front because I want my A facing me as opposed to having it upside down. You want your button further away from you. And then I need to attach this to my um, machine here. See if I can get it in here. Okay, that's on. I'm gonna turn my hand wheel because I want my thread to come from underneath. So turning my hand wheel will lower my needle for me. And when it raises back up, I'll just take something and pull the threads under. So I just took my little tool here. If you can get your finger under there, that's good. I just wanna be able to have my threads coming from underneath. Okay, I got my buttonhole attachment on. And then I also will need to, there is this little hook here, this lever that I need to pull down and it goes sort of behind this first bar on my buttonhole attachment. So like I said, check your machine manual so that you're doing it properly. But this, you can see this has a picture of a buttonhole on it and there's arrows saying to pull it down. So I pull that down and it's going behind this first little bracket of my buttonhole attachment. And then I'm gonna switch to a buttonhole stitch on my machine. And for this machine, I'll choose stitch 35 for my buttonhole. So I'm going to go up here and see how it's on zero. I want to choose stitch 35. So it's on zero right now. So I'll push these numbers this side to get me close. 30, and then I'll go up to 35. Okay. Okay, stitch 35 will be my buttonhole stitch that I'm going to use. Okay, I know this is my center. I'm just gonna put my pin here so that I can get this one out of my way. 
and the way the buttonhole works it's you start here and then it stitches backwards so I'm going to start here and my buttonhole will go that way. Just get it under my machine. Okay, I'm lining this center point up here with my pin that I have here because I know that's the center. And now I'm going to start where this pin here is at the bottom. So you can just lower your needle kind of get yourself in place lower your needle slowly okay and then the right spot you can take this pin out and I'll take this pin out and just press your pedal and it'll make the button hole for you itself when it's done. Just lift your presser foot, raise your needle, and that's your buttonhole. And if you've never created a buttonhole before, I would suggest, um, you know, just looking at your manual and doing a few practice runs before you do it on your actual product. Okay, so from here we have our bag pretty much done. We want to take it and put the inside, entire thing inside of our lining. So you'll have the right side of the bag with the right side of the line. Let's open this up. So just put the whole thing in and just be careful of your straps to push them down. And I'm going to start by matching up my side seams first. Everything else, if it doesn't fit, I'll just sort of stretch it to fit. And I'm just opening up the seam so that it lays a little flatter. Okay. I'm going to stitch it in the front here. And then you'll need to leave an opening so that you can turn it to the right side. And I like to leave my opening in the back here because I'll just do a little hand stitch to close it. But if it's in the back, no one really sees it, so you could do it by machine if you wanted to. So I'll put myself the pin turned that way so I know to stop there. And I'll start about right here. Okay, let's raise this. Let's switch back to our regular presser foot. Don't forget to take your button out of here. Because lots of times I have and then couldn't remember where my button was. Okay. And I just need to go back to my regular straight stitch. So I'm to five. I'm to stitch one. I'm going to start here, and it will be a little tricky getting it in here, so I'll just kind of work with it. Okay. And you're just stitching all the way around the top, being sure to leave yourself an opening. And you have to stop and kind of keep smoothing it out for yourself to make sure it's flat.
from here we can trim the top of it. trim too close here I want to leave this extra fabric so that I have a seam allowance to turn under and stitch okay have it all trimmed now you can just turn it to the right side I'll stick my lining down in the inside of it lining to the inside here, smooth it all out. And then what I'll do is this opening here, I'll fold it under and slip stitch it by hand. If you wanted to, you could just go stitch this on the sewing machine. But I'll do a uh, slip stitch by hand. So I'll close that, then we just need to sew a button on and put some sort of attachment here so that we can close the belt. Okay, from here I'm just gonna slip stitch the opening closed. Start in the inside so that the knot I made is on the inside. And like I said, if you didn't want to, I know sometimes the kids in my class, they tend to hate hand sewing. I don't know why, I guess because it requires a little bit more patience. Um, you could always do this on your sewing machine. going to take a seam ripper and I want to open up my buttonhole but what I'll do is put a pin here so that when I slit it with my uh, seam ripper I don't accidentally go all the way through. And I'm going to slit up. Okay, and that's your buttonhole. Okay, to figure out where my button goes, I'm going to Turn my flap over, and my buttonhole is here, so I'll just put a little mark in the center so I know that's the center of my button. Okay, so here is where I'm going to sew my button. started.
I do that, you know, maybe four times or so, and that makes a sturdy knot for you. closure to here. Here, next step is to attach some type of buckle or you could do a buttonhole, you could do Velcro, um, snaps, anything you want just so you are able to make the two straps on the end attach themselves to each other so that it's a belt. So what I'm using for this are D-rings and it's just what they're said, they're D-rings. So I'm going to put the two of them together put my strap through here or my belt whatever we're going to call it and I'll just pull it over some because then I'll come and sew here so I'll put myself a pin here to hold it in place and then I'll actually switch back to a zipper foot because that would allow me to get as close as possible to these rings so that because there are two there's a entry here and there's an entry here so I need to make sure my needle is clearing the zipper foot so that's what I did it's just moved my needle placement So I'm just going to lift it and do a stitch again. I'll just do a double stitch rather than going backwards so that I can be sure I see what I'm doing. stitch here. Here are D rings and this excess you can cut it off, um, do a zigzag stitch if you need to or probably trim it and just put fray check so that I make sure it doesn't fray. Okay my other end here just so it's finished and looks a little nicer I'll just um, hem the edge of that. So I'm switching back to my regular presser foot now and I just want to turn this in and I'll just do a little stitch across. Okay, here's my stitch on the other end of it. Looks like this, same thing. I'll trim this to make it even and apply some fray check. Okay, here is my fray check. It's kind of worn, so you can't really see it, but it says fray check. And it will just, um, just what it says, it stops the frame. It'll stop your thread from unraveling. Okay, so I'll just apply a thin layer here on the edge. And it basically seals your seams or seals the thread so that they don't continue to come apart. Okay, and I'll give that about a minute to dry before I put it all together. Okay, so then we'll come 
Let me remove this right out of my way. So your fanny pack ends up looking like this. If you did a button, you have your button here. You have the one long end that's just the straight belt. And then the other has your buckle or whatever type of attachment you used. Then you just, you know, put it in your D-rings. Like that. Looks like that on one side. And then when you turn it over, it's like this.